shall we shall we wrap up this party with just a little bit of a of a here's what's going on in in the land of FPA? Sure, go ahead. All right. Um, so the we've we've. Uh, I, I hope that that these are familiar to everybody, or if not familiar, you've at least heard of them or seen them. Given that over a hundred and fifteen or so people registered for this meeting on the FPA website, I know there's at least a hundred and fifteen people in the world who are aware of this website. I would hope it's a few more than that. Um, but uh, but but here it is. Uh, it's fpod.arrow. Uh, even I can remember that. Um, Matthias and the and the fine folks at the NCAR. Um, would you call them corp com folks, Matthias, or 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 web web Our multimedia group? Multimedia group are are the ones who are who built and are managing this. Um, given that that our only. Um, that our only currency is is Matthias's uh, broad toothy grin to these these fine people. Then then we, we we can't exactly tell them to do stuff. We we beg, we borrow, we steal, we we you know we 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 ask them nicely and 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 they get things done. Um, so so what what we request of you, if you haven't done it already for some reason, is to register. Um, as an FPA member, um, and then to provide uh, input, uh, you know, to future topics, uh, and then comments about the website in general. And and I know that Matthias and I talk routinely, and and we bounce ideas off one another. But you know, if you see something and say, "Man, if only they would do this, it would make it so much more effective." We, we, I think we'd love to hear that. Is that not right, Matthias? Yes, and again, as you mentioned earlier, this is sort of a volunteer basis. I tried to get some uh, time from the multimedia folks to update things, and so far they have graciously helped with that. Uh, so it's it's work in progress. And so <laughs> yeah. In some ways, while we solicit input and feedback from you, we are also requesting patience that we may not be able to accommodate everything instantaneously. Yeah, that, that's a great comment, and th thank you for for balancing, you know, the request for input for the request for patience. I I think we could probably market that somehow, but I, I don't quite know how yet. Uh, but but well stated. Um, so we are on social media. Those of you who um um, um are on the Facebook um. FPAW page that John Kosak uh, manages, or the LinkedIn group that I manage, or the the Twitter feed that Joel Siegel um, manages would have seen last night my my hint that we were going to have a um, a keynote speaker of some import this morning, um, and, and but I caveated it by not naming him and tried and getting myself an out in case he couldn't make it for some reason. But uh, but I, I was grateful he did. In any event, these are all good channels to keep you up with what's going on. And um, to the extent that that an old person like me can embrace this and use this, then then we will continue to do so. Uh, John uh, and and Joel, anything from from. Uh, from your positions on either the Facebook or the uh, the Twitter accounts? Hey, just, you know, share that at will. Uh, the more the merrier. Just get it out there, share it with your friends, invite your friends. Um, it's not like we're going to deny anybody access to it until, unless they start pasting, you know, sunglass ads and stuff like that on there. But, uh, it, you know, it's just one more tool to get our message out there. So that's all. Yep. And then I'll just echo John, you know, anybody who wants to follow the the Twitter feed, go for it. I promise it's probably not as entertaining as uh, some other Twitter feeds that you've probably seen recently. Um, <laughs> but I still do try and keep it relatively up to date. I've been kind of slacking during the COVID-19 crisis right now, but um, I am uh, making a commitment to myself and to everybody here that I'll, I'll start updating that a little bit more often. Yeah, and and for, for folks on the call, um, you know, I, I, I've listed our points of contact, but but correct me if I'm wrong, both of you guys now, John and Joel, um, it, it's not just the points of contact that can make entries or, or, or can communicate through these channels. Frankly, anybody can as long as they get the 
the the Twitter handle correct or the LinkedIn group number or name correct or the Facebook page correct? A am I correct about that? Yeah, I mean, if we're going to let you post on Facebook, I guess we'll let anybody post, right? See, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it, it's, a, it's a great place to have this. Uh, Facebook really is a great place to have discussions. You know, if somebody has a question or a comment or an idea, um, it, you know, drop it in there and let, let's, let's use that as a platform to have discussions outside of uh, these meetings. Yeah. Uh, you know, the one thing we're missing this time is that networking, the ability to sit there and talk to people individually sometimes. Well, if you turn uh, your camera on, it would help. No, you don't want to see me. <laughs> <laughs> I've, so so I've, I've adjusted uh, my, my room to a stand up uh, course. But uh, yeah, it, 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 this is an ability for. Uh, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on, on Twitter to have some conversations, but especially Facebook and LinkedIn, both of those platforms uh, allow an opportunity to have uh, extended conversations. So, you know, let's uh, let's use that and let's uh, reach out and chat with each other. Yeah, I agree. So so y'all who aren't aware, um, you know, here's the links. And by the way, all of this material at some point, I don't exactly know when, will be made available. Um, for everybody, um, and we'll have to figure out how to do that. But uh, whether it's on the website, I suppose it'll be on the website, right, Matthias? That will that will store all the uh, the presentations and everything. So yeah, okay. So uh, it'll be there if you if you you know if, if if you don't screen grab this now or or jot this down now, it'll be available on the website. Um, so be, because of the unusual nature of today's meeting. Um, we 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 kind of went went uh, against something that we said earlier, and we we pushed out emails via both our new email list that's linked to the website and our legacy email list with a thousand three hundred and forty seven names on it, of which fifty seven people are dead and all sorts of other stuff like that. But in any event, um, going forward, we're going to stick with the the web based new FPA web page based email list only and our social media channels that we that we uh, that we just covered and and truly retire the legacy email list. So if you want to keep up with what's going on at FPA, know when the meetings are, do all those sorts of things, um, then you will need to uh, get yourself registered on the webpage. web page. It's free and um, and um, then then you'll be able to keep up with stuff. And um, I, I noticed, uh, to, to Matthias's point about patience, I noticed that the, the new web page has the 2019 um, meeting information in there, but none of the ones from earlier meetings, which are still on the UCAR, the RAL UCAR website. Um, and over time, um, all of that information, I hope, will be transferred to the, the new FPAR web page, including things like the sign-in sheets when we have in-person meetings, et cetera, et cetera, so, which are always really kind of interesting for me to take a look at. And very it, frankly, it was very useful when Steve Dixon's speechwriter said, so who, who attends an FPOM meeting? And I, I, rather than try to bore him with that, um, I, I, I basically sent him the, the PDF, the scanned copies of the the last meeting that we had, who who all attended? So um, j just just an interesting source of information there. Um, future FPA meetings and venues. Um, effective with this coming fall meeting, um, and John, I've kind of chosen these words words at least somewhat carefully. Um, uh, FPA will not be routinely hosted by the NBAA at their business aviation convention and exhibition. Um, again, effective with this fall's meeting. Um, th there are very real, very legitimate financial and organizational and, um, and and other reasons for that. I don't think that it is because NBAA is ticked off at FPA uh, or that FPA is angry with NBAA, but there are other factors involved, primarily financial, that 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 dictates some some harder choices and um, and so 
Um, th this is one of them. John, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to I'm just going to flip it over to you and, and ask if there's anything else you want to add to what I've said. No, it's um, it, it's it is what it is. I mean, it's that it's a ten thousand dollar event uh, to to host that at our uh, um, convention every year. Uh, we're more than willing to help defray that cost. But at this point, and, and obviously I'm sure we're not the only ones, but uh, uh, you know, as many people may guess, we make our money from the conventions and forums that we host. And we had to cancel two of the biggest ones that we host throughout the year, uh, our European and Asian business conferences. So uh, like many other com country, uh, companies and organizations, uh, you know, we're trying to find ways to tighten the belt. Um, obviously, we started this discussion before that happened, uh, but this that just kind of exacerbated it. Um, it. You know, as I mentioned to you guys via email, we're more than happy to actually host, uh, but we'd love to have some help defraying those costs. AOPA has been wonderful in that fashion over the years. Uh, they've been uh, the only other major contributor. We have had a couple of people sponsor some lunches occasionally, um, but uh, you, you know, unless unless we do that. And, and the other thing is, and this is just me personally speaking, um, I, I'm you know we've done a lot of work over the last few years to try and increase the business aviation um, component of that uh, to get people from our business aviation community to c come to the meetings. Uh, the only problem with that is that at the exact same time, uh, our you know folks that do the convention have been doing just an insanely great job of giving people more reasons to stay on that convention center floor. So that, that's the other thing that I was thinking is that, it, you know, maybe this is an opportunity for somebody else to host and for us to uh, get some fresh ideas in fresh locations. Yeah, and, and thank you, John. Matias, any, any additional comments um, from you, sir? Nope. So, um, so, so I, 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 for one, frankly, must say that I had no clue what the cost of hosting FPA at NBAA was, and and John's throwing around a number now that is is at least a hundred times more expensive than I would have guessed it is. Um, so, so, um, you know that that for me really drives it home and and absolutely I get it. Um, so um, so so we, we will just have to see how this evolves. And and um, and I know that between Matthias and I, you know, we said, well, can you give us more time? Hey, okay. and John, can, can you give us more time? And and uh, and and finally, we had to we had to uh, belly up to the bar, so to speak. And, and so so I'm happy to announce, actually, that um, that that this coming uh, fall uh, October uh, meeting will be taking place at NCAR Center Green facility in Boulder, provided, of course, that <laughs> we are back to semi normal at that point in time. Otherwise, we'll be doing this virtual thing again, I suppose. Um, and that the the spring meeting uh, we, we hope uh, and expect it to take place um, at um, the NTSB Conference Center, where this meeting should have on TBD dates next I don't know, somewhere between late March and early May, and I guess that is to be worked out. Um, I'm really excited, and I don't know if Heather's still on the line, but I'm really excited to announce that uh, the fall 2021 FPA meeting, um, we have been offered um, a, a, an opportunity to hold it at the National Severe Storms Lab in uh, Laboratory in Norman. Uh, by Heather Reeves and the and the fine folks out there. Heather, are you still on? I, I haven't been paying attention to the list. I will take silence to to mean no. Uh, but but Heather inquired right away she, what so oh, she says she's, she's here. here. Oh. Um, well, are you are you signing or speaking? <laughs> she wrote. She uh, texted that she's still here. Yeah, yeah. I'm here. Right, there she is. There you go. There you go. See, I, I, it's a good thing I didn't say anything bad about you. <laughs> yeah, I know. I would have. Uh, this is being recorded, I think. So it is. <laughs> I'll add to that to hold over your head for later on. <laughs> 
So, so, so Heather, uh, um, again, th thank you very much. Thank you so much for standing up when you did. I got to tell you that for me personally, that was that was a real a real boost because I I I wasn't sure what we were going to do with FPA in the falls after after you know this this fall coming up. So it, it's really neat to th that you did that, and I'm hopeful that there'll be others like. NWS, like Ezra, like the FAA, like like you know, name an airline. Steve Abelman, I saw you on there. That would be willing to host a fall FPA meeting um, uh, in the in the in the upcoming years. Any any tidbits, any any teasers for us, Heather, on things that we might expect to see or do out in Norman? And this time of year, by the way, probably shouldn't be a ton of tornadoes, which is probably a good thing. Yeah, we've been really lucky this year so far with the severe weather. It hasn't been so bad here, although um, it certainly has been bad elsewhere. But uh, no, the National Weather Center in Norman is a great facility. We have the Storm Prediction Center is there. There's a WFO there. It, um, we house the Radar Operations Center. Um, the Warning Decision Training Division is there. The um, Oklahoma Mesonet is there. The Southern Region um, Climate Center is in an adjacent building. Um, we have several private sector agencies um, on the campus, on the South Campus, next to the National Weather Center. It's just a really exciting, um, interesting venue to visit. Um, I hope that most of you can come, and we really look forward to hosting it in fall 2021. Very good. Thank you, Heather, very, very much from the bottom of my pea picking heart. Um, and, and by the way, anybody else from these any uh, or 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 any of you all from any organization who can host a meeting uh, with between, uh, let, let's just say, based on nominal conditions, 100 and 150 people and, and are willing to do so. Uh, you, you don't have to volunteer now, but you could drop either Matthias or me an email. We'd be happy to, to put you in in line with uh, with with everybody else. Um, almost last but not least, um, the uh, the 2020 Weather Prize will be awarded uh, this fall at our in-person meeting at the uh, NCAR facilities in Boulder. Um, if you recall, the inaugural Weather Prize went to uh, Dr. John McCarthy um, uh, at the AMS annual meeting in, I believe, I hope I have the years right here, in 2017. Um, Last year, uh, sorry, in 2018, uh, also at the AMS annual meeting, um, uh, one of our own, Bruce Carmichael and Bob Sharman received, were, were co-winners of the Weather Prize, Weather Prizes. Uh, in 2019, at our spring meeting, uh, Dr. Jim Evans from MIT Lincoln Labs was awarded uh, the Weather Prize. And, and this year was going to be awarded at this meeting uh, Tim Miner uh, very correctly said, I'm not sure what I think about virtually awarding somebody a virtual meeting and then shipping them their plaque. How about if we hold off until the fall, which which we certainly agreed to do. Um, so so hopefully there'll be lots of folks out at Boulder in the fall to not only attend the FPA meeting, but to but to see who this year's winner of the the weather prizes. Um, Tim, if you're still on, do you do you, do you have any um, comments you want to add to that? None at all, and let's wrap it up. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Last thing then, for for uh, for everybody who is here today and is still hanging in there, tomorrow morning, starting at eleven, ending at three, much nicer time. We will be holding our planning meeting, uh, which we normally hold on the front end. We're going to hold it on the back end because of uh, of the circumstance we're in here and. Um, uh, the the meeting invite that Rhonda sent out way back when had a separate, different Microsoft Teams meeting um, uh, link in there. If you need that to be resent, please reach out to me or to Rhonda or look on the um, FPA website or ping me via the FPA Facebook page or John. Uh, well, there's lots of ways to get a hold of us and to get this information. We very much value your input and look forward to hearing what you might have to say tomorrow to help us shape not only the fall meeting coming up, but then future meetings going forward. I'm going to stop here. Matthias, how about taking us home? OK, well, I see there were a few questions or comments happening here. Uh, I see uh, agreement and happiness with this virtual format. 
that may enable a more easy participation from people without having to travel. But at the same time, I also see a, uh, a downside from the in-person interaction during the meeting, during the breaks, maybe over a beer or dinner afterwards. So it's a trade-off. But uh, we have explored uh, virtual part, uh, sort of remote participation in the past. And depending on where the location was, uh, particularly the NTSB in uh, DC and also NBAA. This would come at an extra cost and we think what I recall is on the order of two or three thousand dollars to set this up, bring it into these venues. So this is not cheap, it goes back to essentially again costs that we don't have the resources. I think if we host the uh, a meeting at NCAR or NSSL or MITRE, we might have different options that could, you know, make it possible to have partly remote participation. Uh, so we will uh, look into this uh, for future meetings to see whether that's a, a possibility. But at this point, I would really like to thank our session chairs and the speakers to all the effort that they put into uh, creating interesting and informative uh, sessions uh, go smoothly through this. It, this was really uh, a first for us to see if this is going to work well, and it did. I also would like to thank the participants for dialing in, uh, providing stimulating questions that stimulated discussions. That was really interesting. And I would I'd like to thank Matt Franzak and David Strand for shepherding us through this uh, day uh, and the technology for holding up. So <laughs> we didn't know how this is going to work out, but I think it went really smoothly. So thank you, everybody. And we hope to see many of you tomorrow morning as part of the uh, FPA planning for the next uh, few FPA meetings. Thank you. Have yep. a good evening. Bye bye, all. <laughs>